Excellent. Good evening. I'm Dave DePosis. I'm the project manager for the Islington Street project for the city of Portsmouth. Um, all the team members, except for the uh, project representative that's uh, from Underwood is here. He's, uh, he's sick, so he's at home. He'll be able to answer your questions from home if you ask them. His name's Brad. So just going through the whole project team, I want to start on the city side, and then we'll work our way around to the contractors. So uh, in the other white shirt over here is Eric Eby. Uh, he's the city's traffic engineer, for those of you who don't know him. And again, my name is Dave DeFosis. To my right is Matt Hall. He's the project manager for the uh, engineer that we hired, which is Underwood Engineering. To his right is Dan Rochette. He's kind of uh, Matt's supervisor, I would say, at this point. And then to his right in the blue and green shirt is Mark Rainey. He's the supervisor for Severino Construction. That's our contractor. And then to Mark's right is Roger Rivet. He's the guy that's actually going to build the job. So he's the very most important guy to know. Uh, he'll be the guy on, on scene doing all the all the work. So as you know, we've been uh, working on the Islington Street project now for uh, probably four or five years. If you start, you know, we started kind of all the way out by Porcel Plains. We did that first project where we built the sidewalk and we put sewer in, in that outer section of Islington Street on the other side of the bypass. And then we started the, the, uh, from the bypass and we did that first year, we did it from the bypass to Barlow Street. And then we did from Barlow Street to Dover Street. And then we did the Columbia area, the Columbia Court, that whole area, the end of Street Street. So that all got done in previous projects. So this project is what the city's calling Project 2A. So uh, Project 2, total of Project 2, does go all the way to Midport. So this is year one of what we hope is a total project. So this year's project starts at Dover Street, more or less, right where we left off, right where they built the new condominiums that down in the in the hollow down there. And they go uh, down, proceeding down the hill through the Cabot Street intersection. The Cabot Street traffic signals get completely replaced. As part of this, there'll be a, there'll be a, a mass arm. So they actually go over the lane so that you can actually see the signals when they're red, when the sun's shining in your face in the afternoon, on those fall days, uh, you'll be able to see the traffic signals um, a lot more clearly than you can today. So uh, the owners of the, the gas station um, were nice enough to give us a, an easement so that we could uh, create a, found, a new foundation. So all the traffic signals will be on one pole. So that one pole kind of goes across the intersection Kitty corner and all the different traffic lights for all the different directions hang off that one hole. So, and then proceeding and continuing toward downtown, uh, the project goes uh, all the way up to almost to the parking lot where Electric Bay is. Uh, in this project, we actually uh, did sign, um, we, we call it an, uh, an ad alternative in the contract uh, for Goodwin Park. So, this project also includes a facelift to the entrance to Goodwin Park. And the reason why we did that is uh, we're changing Goodwin Park subtly. There's no changes inside the park, really. All the changes are like within 25 feet of Islington Street. And what we're doing is we're realigning with a, the two pathways that go in at 45 degrees toward the center of the park. Those get realigned when they go out to Islington Street. So they line up with the, with the side streets that they're and then they get crosswalks so that people coming from the other side of business street and then the other side will have a nice crosswalk that they can cross to go right into the park. We're also creating a new gateway to the park, which is the new grand entrance that goes around the Veterans Memorial that's there, the square monument that's kind of sitting in the grass right now. That'll be uh, completely encompassed in a brick walkway that goes right up to the main monument in the middle. Uh, and then uh, we're putting in some baller lights. So we're increasing some of the lighting in the park too, uh, to make it a little safer in the park at night. So um, that being said, that's kind of the scope of the project. You, I've introduced the team. Um, Matt is gonna go through the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, that should basically give you most of the data that you need. And then we'll all be here to field questions, whatever you have for questions after that. Uh, we'll go through the question 
uh, and answer portion after Matt gives his presentation. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dave. Let's see if we can get into it. I should have mentioned Stephanie Secord is our is our communication. <laughs> I think she's part of her because she was part of the project, but but she is very important. Everybody has seen that. All right. So as Dave mentioned, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to review the project team. We did uh, the limits of work, where we're going, what we're doing, anticipated startup schedule, when we're going to be start, when we're going to be starting, how long we're going to be going for, uh, what the traffic patterns you will be seeing out on site are and how you can get public information and updates on it. So here are the project team contacts for the city of Portsmouth, Underwood, and Severino. City of Portsmouth, Peter Rice is the director of public works. He's kind of the head of the project. Dave's the primary contact, he's the project manager. He'll be who you'll likely be speaking to from the city if you have questions. And as far as Parking, transportation, and traffic. Eric will be your outlet for that. Matt, excuse me for interrupting, but as communications person, all of this presentation will be posted on the web page for the project um, first thing tomorrow, and all of this information or the contact information will be right there too. And we will be resuming those weekly once the construction starts. We were doing a weekly update on the end of the week, and we'll start those up again. Sorry. No, no worries. For Underwood, it'll be myself as project manager, uh, Katie Canella. She's watching from home right now. She'll be the project engineer. Uh, Brad is also watching from home. He'll be the resident project representative. He'll be out on site with Roger every day. Every and, day. Every day. And then uh, Dan Rochette will be the technical support back at the office for us. Uh, Severino Trucking, uh, the contractor for the job, Tom Severino, the vice president, he's been involved with it for the past few years. Mark Rainey, project manager, he's also been involved with phase one for the past few years. And then Roger Rivet, he'll be on the ground every day putting it in. There's a cell phone number, he's very responsive and always personable on site. So project limits. As Dave mentioned, we've already done phase one, which was the route one bypass up to Dover Street. That's been completed thus far. Phase two, the base bid will be from Dover Street to Cornwall, that's 2A, which is what we'll be doing this year. As Dave mentioned, we do have an ad alternative that we added in, which is Goodwin Park. Uh, another ad alternative, which has not been awarded, uh, so there's no construction scheduled for it, is the remainder of the project from Cornwall to Maplewood. So here's just a graphic showing what we've done in yellow, what we'll be doing this year is in red, and what has not been awarded but has been designed is in blue. So this year, uh, th oh, this goes over uh, phase two in its entirety. So that is from Dover to Cornwall in red. That's what we're doing this year, as well as at alternative three, Goodwin Park in purple, and then, as mentioned, the blue has not been awarded. That's taking it from Cornwall to Maplewood. So the start of construction, we're looking to start the first week of April, doing some light work out there. We'll be putting in temporary water systems throughout April. So you will be on temporary water. We'll be removing the new water main throughout the project, or the old water main throughout the project while we put in the new water main. Um, we'll be getting into sewer installation. That'll be done first. That's going to start up in April, and that can be anticipated to finish up sometime in the summer in June. And then following that, we'll work on water, drainage, sidewalks, curbing, roadway box out, adding gravels and a stable base, and then a new paving roadway. Uh, and then as well as Goodwin Park sometime this summer. Schedules still following for that. So this just goes through the sequencing of where we're gonna be starting and in what order. Right here, we're gonna start from Dover Street, or Cabot Street up to Rockingham with sewer. These ones will go quick. And then following that, we'll be doing sewer from Cabot Street up to Dover Street. 
and then sewer in the Cabot intersection. Following that, we're going to be doing the water main from Cabot Street up to Cornwall, as well as drainage that's on that side of the road. We'll be boxing out the road, adding a stable road base on that side. And then on the other side of the road, we'll be doing any water services that are over there, drainage that's over there, box cutting and adding gravels. Following that, we'll be paving that section of the roadway binder for the winter and then on the other side of Cabot Street over to Dover Street we'll be doing the same thing doing water drainage box cutting on that side flipping to the other side of the street doing the remainder of it over there and then paving that area as well so this is what you can expect to see if you're out there walking around uh, picture on the left is the sewer main being installed and then the picture on the right is a sewer service connection to a foundation. This is uh, what you can expect to see depending on how far we go up to your property with a new sewer service, we'll be digging a trench and all private property work will be restored to its prior condition. Traffic patterns, uh, this will be one lane alternating. There won't be a detour in place. Um, Two-way traffic will be restored for nighttime. There will be flaggers out there to help assist at current work zones, wherever they are. They'll be letting one lane go and then the other. Which you can see here as the blue area is under construction, it'll be coned off and marked off. There will be proper signage ahead of it, indicating the work zone ahead from both sides. Traffic will stop on one side and come through on the other. Distribution of public information, door-to-door, uh, -door, Brad and Roger will be out there every day, fielding any questions that you might have at the time out there. We'll be having message boards out there indicating any water shutdowns or things like that that'll be happening. Uh, the social media page for the City of Portsmouth, uh, their Twitter, their project webpage, and an email distribution. We'll be sending out weekly updates of what you can expect for work that'll come that week. And I think that, yep, this is, uh, you can follow that link if you, you know, go on the slideshow, that'll take you to the city of Portsmouth page uh, for the project. And I might add that this is an old picture. It's not currently showing March 2020. Yes. <laughs> okay, so let's go, I want to go back a little bit. Can you go back one of the time slides? <laughs> now you're what waiting. Is going? Questions are done, dude. <laughs> Right the back okay, so I just want to go over uh, sequence and uh, why things are done the way they are. So when the city's rebuilding a road like this, uh, we obviously, it's not obvious, we have to maintain all the utility infrastructure while we're replacing everything. If that makes sense, you need to make sure that your toilet's still flush and make sure the dirty water. So, one of the that's where the first thing that you saw was the temporary water. So, the, the new water is actually going to go pretty much exactly where the old water main was. So, to do that, we're going to set up that temporary line like they had last year um, that went down the hill from you know, by the red blocks and all that stuff. That temporary. By avoiding pipe, it's like this big with the other leg on the sidewalk. So, um, Severino will start installing that later in April once the temperatures are warm enough. They will make sure it's not going to freeze. So, they put that whole temporary pipe system together and then they flush it. We bacteria test everything, make sure it goes to the lab, make sure it's clean, and then we hook everybody up. And then, once that's done, we can shut off the old main. That way, we can dig around it safely. So, that's the reason why we're doing that. Um, when you're replacing utilities on the ground, it's kind of like building a layer cake. So the sanitary sewer is always, almost always the deepest pipe. So that's why on the slides, they started with the sanitary sewer. So 
They install pipes from the deepest and they work their way up so that they don't have to dig underneath anything that they've already installed. That's the reason for that. So if we go back to this slide where we're talking about um, doing the utilities, that's fine, right there. Um, the reason why we're going from Cabot up toward Lexi's first with the paving is because because of the park, there's no houses on that side. So there's a lot less utility work on that side of the intersection. So we're taking advantage of that so that we can get the utilities in that section done first. We can put the first layer of pavement down. Once we build the first layer of pavement, the sidewalks and all the ancillary stuff that we all care about is what gets built off that binder layer. So the, the sidewalk, the new sidewalks, the curbing, the street lights where they go, and the park improvements will all get built off that. So by doing that section first by the park, that then they get all the subcontractors that are working for Severino that install the curbing and sidewalks and all that sort of work and, and the lighting, they can all get going. And they can start working on the park, they can start working on that whole side of the job. Meanwhile, Roger will be on the other side of the intersection with the Severino team finishing installing the water main and the drainage on that side. And then um, just for the layperson, boxing the road means that basically we're gonna take the entire gravel section that's underneath the road right now, and we're going to displace that and we're going to replace it with a holistic gravel layer so that because the road is there, the gravel that's there, although it's pretty good in most places, it's been dug through 75 times because for every house, of course, there's a water service, a sewer line, a gas line, and sometimes a drainage connection, but not that many on the street, but then the telephone lines. So all that dirt that was originally placed to make a nice layer, make a nice road, has been dug through so many times that we're gonna remove that material and create a holistic new gravel layer. And that's what's gonna support the pavement for the next 100 years. So the project basically endeavors, as you know, from living there, the gas line got replaced three or four years ago. So the gas line, when the gas line got replaced down the side of the street where the gas station is, that side of the street, we already knew where all the pipes were gonna go back then. So the gas line that they installed then is out of our way. So the gas line's been replaced. Roger is gonna replace the sewer line, the water line, drainage pipes. When we're done, with the exception of when somebody builds a new building and then maybe they need a bigger water line, there's no, really no reason to dig up the street again because everything under the street's gonna be new, just like it was 130 years ago. So I just wanna explain that process a little bit so that it made sense. You've seen the slides and you're seeing, well, why are we doing that side first? Why aren't they starting at the brick box and continuing down? That's the reason, so that we can take advantage of there's less services so we can start working on that side and we can get the project to a little bit faster. Right? So that being said, we'll, we'll take questions. I don't know if anybody's online either, but we need to ask that as well. Yeah, so water, sewer, drainage are all under this industry. Yes. Uh, what about, can you, can you come to the microphone please so people can? If you would, so the, the one thing about recording on YouTube is the screen has four acoustics. So if you don't speak into the microphone, they can't hear you on the video. Now. I gotcha. So water, sewer, it, or, or under and drainage are under the street. Then you mentioned something about phone lines. Are there phone lines underneath the street as well? There are many phone lines. We had one of the first underground phone systems around. Okay. And my next question was, was there any consideration given to burying all the electric and all the overhead? Oh, yeah. We went through that inner process many times during the early design years. And basically we came to the realization that the reason, I mean, there's always the money thing and everybody will say it's expensive. It is, it's very expensive. But the hardest part about putting utilities on the ground is that nobody wants a transformer on the front lawn. And that's what it takes because the transformers, they can run the power, they can run everything on the ground. But at the end of the day, you need to step the voltage down the household, household voltage and it means somebody's getting transformers and you need a transformer every 250 to 300 feet. So it's like one house on every block gets a transformer in their front yard. And that's what makes it kind of unrealistic in our generation at least mm -hmm. to do that. So that's why. Curious. 
Yes, sir. I don't know, I might be going out too late. Turn of mind, we live in a condo association near the Dave's Tire area. Okay. I, is that going up to this, this year? Or I don't know the street no. names too well. No, you'll be in the next phase. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know, from my point of view, is storm water going to be in a totally different pipe than sewer? Is that Absolutely. Possible? Yes. Okay. One of our goals. And we have five unit condo, you know, we park in the back, and we get a lot of the runoff water, whatever the groundwater accumulates. It's a low spot, basically. And it's a lot of water. We have a sister and another thing that by well that copes with it. But we were told in the past that. At some point, we might be able to pump the water into the sewer line. That's into the drain pipe, okay. not the sewer line. Yeah. I mean, excuse me, I, I meant sewer water here. Yeah. yeah. Is that realistic? Um, yeah, and, and we will be willing to take a look at that. Um, you're, you're, because you're, from what you're, you're telling me, you live in the McDonough Street side of this street. And, and those and those consolidated. Next to consolidated, I don't know the street names too well. So you're on the state street side? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. When the drainage system cistern gets to you, then we'll be able to deal with that situation. I'm aware of the situation. The exact one I'm talking about, or just the situation? It's pretty bad. We have a lot of drainage problems on that side. So what happens is, uh, if you look in the state, right. in the summer, and Middle Street is a topographical hole in there, yeah. and there's no way for the water to go. No. So part of the of the next phase of the next project is to hopefully put a pipe inlet in to drain that hole. So at least there's a way to drain the hole because right now there's no way to drain the hole. So you got uh, various properties. Yeah, yeah, the whole area is. We have to rent two sump pumps eighty percent of the time yeah. all year. Yes. And we get the water from, you know, the, I know you do. The government, the completely aware of you, beer, you know, that. We have a unique side of the situation, and uh, we actually have a, uh, we're planning to put a pipe. What, what, what's the next one? Business is there. Do you remember? It's the right hand side of that strip wall. I remember where the strip wall. Yeah, it's in yeah, the next page. We have a pipe. Cliff, Dr. Cliff, Cliff. Yes. So we we look at that and so on. We'll look at that. What's a very very rough estimate? You'd never be held to as to when that might be happening. Yeah. Well, it depends on funding. So the city council hasn't funded the second half of this job yet. So I can't tell you. Even so I can't you, tell you because I can't speak for that. So it could be a year. It could be five years. Huh? In a year. I'm hoping it's here. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So yep. realistically, we could pump into the yes. There's going to be a small drain. Water. There's going to be a small drainage connection. If you're on, isn't right? right? Yeah. Then you're going to have a small drainage connection. But when will we, it be at the bottom of the bowl, or no, we have to pump up? To the you'll have to pump, but there'll be a, a culvert inlet that drains the bowl. But that won't address the groundwater. Under the ground, it's only going to address the surface water. So if we get one of these big storms, we'll really get four or five inches. And I've seen that. I've seen oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am very aware of it. So that's what the that's what the culvert. Right. So we have a little stream that goes through our property. But that will not be affected. Right. By and when we moment. and just so you know, when we paid State Street last year, we tried to address all the water that was coming down State Street down those driveways to help and mitigate it temporarily. As much as we could, so we already started fixing the problem. But we get the water from the BFW. We get the water from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're the actual chemical. Yep, I know. I mean, so we got to use the fund, but we got to suck fine water till, so what until we put the culvert in? But that's still not going to solve our problem. It's never going to solve the groundwater problem. That's the that's the that's. The, that's is that different than the stormwater problem? Yeah, stormwater is what falls, rain, runoff. 
Okay, so stormwater is going to be addressed. The groundwater, whatever soaks into the ground and whatever goes through the soil and hits uh, the, the soils underneath, um, that water can't deal with. Do we pump it back into the street or is that not going to be pump it into the stormwater connection? Where is that? That'll be in the front of the house. You will? Yeah. That's not a nickel, huh? The pumping? Yeah. Yes. Well, and the and we're down quite a hill. So we and have I would be willing to come to your house pick up the, and talk to you about it in greater detail at a future date. Okay, well, then people said to get back to us, they don't need to right. detail. I will get back to you. Who's going to I don't get it. I'm not. We're getting our basement re and redone right now. Sealed. Yeah. Rest time. Yeah. Basement mitigation. You give me a call at Walmart. What's a good time for that? <laughs> 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 no, I'm not mean now I mean, no, I mean this whatever that's doing that's the way to well and um, you won't forget it. So it's fine. You know, I'm coming over here, you're pretty busy. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you at 72? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. There's a carriage house. Yeah. yeah. No one will buy it. One more time. Okay, next question. Thank you. You're welcome. What up? Uh, I live across the street from, uh, I guess, really between Lexi's and Blue and High. Okay. And I have the concerns that cross what you briefly brought up. Uh, right now, all the cars parked across the street from, as you know, Lexi's along our side in that building. And the visibility out of the last car of the crosswalk is horrible. It's probably 20 feet off the crosswalk. So literally, when you go into that crosswalk, you have to stop, stick your head around the vehicle, check, because we know how people stop at crosswalks. And, you know, it, it is a dog park. It's a, you know, in all fairness, they're a lot better than this town than they are. Well, from my experience. Right. What we're hoping for is project mm -hmm. and crosswalk. They'll have a, a light that, like a lot of them have, and push a button and it flashes. And I know they're trying to slow the traffic down in Islington Street. So it seems like that's a good place to slow it down as you come into the park and everything, getting close to the town. And that because again, the visibility in that crosswalk is horrible. I think there's the park there. Yeah, yeah. It's two that, lights. Yeah. So you. you that's that's out of the street, I believe. Yeah, there's a corner of Cornwall, Cornwall. So they are bumping out. There's a light right on that side of the crosswalk and a light on that cross with the new, it's kind of similar to where um, White Heron is. So they'll be illuminated with a pedestrian walking sign. So, so, it, so it does slow them down going out of town. I think the thing thing answer is, is that the, the job's been engineered. Let's see what gets built. And let's see if we have to reassess that for them. So we're hoping that, that makes sense. There'll be a flash. You're right. We're hoping that there will be yeah, a flash. Well, I understand. And, you know, and, I mean, they're expensive. They're not crazy expensive. But but let's see what, what gets built with pedestrian accommodations, VHB, the, the design for the street, and and all the, all the crosswalks and stuff. Let's see what they did. And let's see if we can do more. Does that make sense? And you're talking about the Cornwall crosswalk, right? Yes. Yeah, there are a lot of the crosswalks in town that have much more visibility. They have those flashes? That crosswalk doesn't have the visibility. So yes, I hear you. The balance yeah. there is you know you're removing parking to provide visibility, and then the people who like to park there, I don't think you have to remove the parking. Just we have some kind of flash. Yeah, it so looks like it looks like they already did remove one parking yeah. spot. Yeah, they to just make it there down, down the road creates a slower. Okay, so we said on our front there many times, I've seen many, many close calls. Yes, yes. But again, you're, you're, you're peeking around the vehicle. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. No, and they did change like the paint marks. So if you're coming out of Cornwall and you're taking a right, that gets pretty <laughs> dirty. You put a sign out there before and it kind of creates a blind spot that kind of moves the parking farther down so that we have a little more visibility looking right across. So yeah. they have addressed yeah. all those problems. It's going to be similar to the first phase. and. All that stuff where you get the brand new, not flashing yet, but Eric's usually pretty attentive to that and goes through town and takes all the notes. He, he puts them where he needs to, like he can stop signs, but he's got to run the template for a little while. 
it's going to be a mess while I'm out there, anyway. So everybody should be going pretty slow. Yes, thank you. Friday, is there a bump out plan on that side? Yes, yeah, yeah. So the pedestrians be able to stand, you'll have a better view because you'll be out there standing on the curb in front of the car instead of back. That'd be nice. Some other question. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, uh, <clears throat> John Dirk and I own the property at uh, 392 and 394 Islington, just on the corner of Union and Islington. My question is somewhat personal. I, I have granite steps on the front, they go right out to the sidewalk. And there's part the sort of the bottom step is crooked. Yeah, I saw that. that. We were walking out there a couple weeks ago. And, and I don't know what the cause is, but I don't is that something that would be addressed uh, in the construction process, or is that something I need to contract someone else with? Generally speaking, it's your property. It's not something that Roger's responsible for. However, if you wanted to hire somebody who works with stone and fix it while the sidewalk's all gone and disturbed, we can definitely work with you to accommodate that. Okay, so who would, who, would, who should I coordinate? That with Roger. Okay. He's your guy on the on my card. You said uh, 394, 392? Yeah. So I, okay, yeah. So I talked to you. I, got, yeah, I talked, I was in the open face, and I did have talked to a couple of your tenants. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take a look at that. I'll, I know I gave a couple of your tenants back. Okay. Good. Anybody else? No, that's it. Like, okay. Good. Yeah. Good. And also with the ask, just they do, the road does get slightly adjusted. We're talking inches, probably won't notice it more through the construction phase. So eventually I'm gonna be out there in the next couple of weeks and kind of adjusting those elevations anyway. So at some point, if that road comes up a little, it might cover a little more of that step. It might yeah. step itself as bad. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, strapping yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. If I can fix it long, then I'll take care of it. Okay, all right, I'll be in touch. Thank you. Who's next? No? No questions for me again? No, no, no. Okay. 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 I noticed um, I'm part of the project coming down on this one to between the sidewalk and the road they have a grass area. I guess two questions is, is are they going to be doing that down towards the end that they're going to be doing now? And no, you're getting an arch shape. Okay. And the second question is why do they do What's the reason for having a grass area between the sidewalk and the road? Well, that's a really thoughtful question. I mean, so the reason why we do that. So the snow has a place to live in the wintertime. So that the plow that's plowing the road pushes the snow. The sidewalk tractor can actually be on the sidewalk and is not fighting with the plow. The snow goes in the middle, so we get a fully cleared sidewalk. We get a fully cleared road, so we can park on the edge and the car's not sticking in the road. So it's basically to give a place for the snow to live in the time. I never would have thought that was a concept. But I had to put it out. That makes sense? It does. You know, I, I wonder times the town might be. It also, it also, by the way, it just gives the pedestrian a little safer experience. When you're a pedestrian and you're working on a side on a sidewalk yeah. right next to a road, especially if it's not a parking lane, it's you know, you I like to believe it's comfortable, but it's not comfortable for everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? That grass strip just kind of separates you from. From traveling traffic just a little bit makes you feel more, more comfortable as a pedestrian. Just curious. Okay. We have two people on online, so we're going to take their questions. And then if anybody else has a question, we'll take it back. So, Ken Goldman. Ken, can you hear us? Okay. Um, did, did I, am I muted or? Oh, we can hear you now. Okay, great. I had a question about what, whether there will be street trees. There will be street trees. That's a good question. We didn't bring that up. Um, we are planting yeah. several trees in the work zone. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah, the plans are online on the project page. So you can see them, you can look it up and you can see where the trees are planned to go. Wonderful. Okay, Thank there's yep, there's PDFs online that you can look at. Okay, great. Thank you. 
You're welcome. Liz Bratter. Hi, Liz. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you now. How okay, great. Things? Good. Um, I, I love the project. It's It looks great. So far, so good. Um, the only thing that I noticed last time when um, Islington Street went to one lane is that uh, State Street became an interesting driving experience. So I was hoping that um, intermittently we could have um, police officers hanging out on the corners on State Street as well as um, McDonough Street to remind people that the reason stop signs are there are for you to stop. Um, the purpose of those stop signs is to mitigate people flying down State Street as well as McDonough Street. And a lot of people know those streets exist and use them as shortcuts. And the way they shortcut them is by not at all stopping or barely stop when the traffic gets backed up and their frustration level gets high. So I'm hoping we could have a little bit more presence on those two streets when the traffic is only one lane. We will have to uh, send your concerns over to Chief and Fort. Thank you. Can't, you. can't speak for him directly. Okay, thank you very much. And we'll take Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Can you hear me? We can hear you. A hey, quick question for you guys. I live in the condos across the street from Goodwin Park. Yeah. Is the, is the sidewalk on, you know, across the street from Goodwin, is that sidewalk going to be torn up and destroyed? Or Because yes. it's relatively, it is, it, even though it's relatively new. Oh, across from, no, across from Goodwin. No, just the, um, just the brick strip because we have to put in the lighting. So the concrete sidewalk itself will stay intact. Okay. Um. So I promised the developers we do because they they were so confident that we were going to destroy the sidewalk when we were rebuilding it. They didn't want to pay for that sidewalk. So I told them that we would not destroy the sidewalk when we built the project. I think the ends get redone. Yeah, so we, we're going to be doing the handicap ramp on either side. But other than that, that concrete sidewalk is going to stay. And we're just going to have to or replace the bricks that are in that brick strip once the lighting conduit goes through. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Okay. No, no. Ken has another question. Yeah. Um, the Goldman's, did you have another question? Uh, no, we just forgot to take our hand down. Sorry. It's okay. It happens to me too. <laughs> okay. So, um, if somebody pops up, we'll back it up. But does anybody else have any questions? I guess I do. Okay. I'm at uh, 371 Islington, uh, between Salem, Cabot Street, it would be. Okay. Uh, I mean, our building is a lot of work. Just in general, I didn't know uh, that that sidewalk section is going to be uh, bumped out further, right? Or is that going to stay the way it is? You know, uh, I that looks like it'll stay the same. Getting... That looks like it'll stay the same. All right, same way if it won't be going out, but it'll be a brick strip. Yeah, you get, yeah, you that's get what I was telling. Totally, no, the curb stays pretty much in the same. I talked to Scott. Oh yeah, Scott. Yeah, and. Um, so some of the brick, so you, the granite curve stays in the same location, goes up and down a couple inches, um, five foot sidewalk, and then we redo the brick then, kind of where the your heat lamp. So that kind of gets redone, and then we provide you with a new sewer stub, drainage stub, and new water. You actually get a drainage stub to each corner. So we only do it sometime. Perfect. Yeah, so that's a that's a good point. I mean, we didn't even know. So we are going to provide a drainage stub to each dwelling house. Um, not that not the houses that are um, between Cornwall and Ryan, because all their water goes up the back. Um, yes, they're already taken care of. But those of you that are up on the street, you'll get a you'll get one of those six inch plastic pipes. So what we've done is we've taken our best daughter where that's going to go, and speaking to where your downspout is. 
And the reason why we do that is twofold. Um, one, we're trying to capture as much storm water as we can so it's not running on the sidewalk. Once it comes down to roof gutters, we don't want it spilling on the sidewalk and being any ice for the pedestrians. Reason number one. Reason number two, a lot of times people have their sump pumps tied in to their sanitary sewer, which is very naughty, but they have no place else to put it right now. So that connection is also there for that, so that and if you have a sump pump and it is connected, the market judge, but um, if you could make arrangements once you get your black stormwater pipe, put your sump pump water in there, and that way the sewer treatment plant doesn't have to treat your sump pump water. So that's the reason why we do that. And it's not, it's not a cheap thing to do, but it, it's really worth it. Um, it just it takes a lot of that water out of the system, and it's just less sewer that we all have to pay for when you get your water to sewer bills. Because your bill, when people do that, even though you don't have it, you're paying for somebody else's roof water. So that's what you got to think about it. Okay. Anybody else have a question? Dave, can I just have one? Sure, yeah. I just wanted I just wanted to add that um, you know, obviously if you know during the course of the work, people have like delivery schedule, like appliances or um big deliveries that feel free to, you know, we can well uh, for Severino, but if, if they know enough ahead of time, you know that that stuff is available. Is they have they have the ability to coordinate that stuff. So, if, you know, you give them a little notice and say, "Hey, I get a delivery coming. Does 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 this particular day work, or should I try to go another day?" You know, they they can work with you guys to try to accommodate that. Um, you know, Rogers, like I said, Rogers obviously out there every day. Uh, Brad from our office is out there every day. And if there's any questions, concerns whatever regarding the project you know, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to these guys and and uh, talk to them and, and you know get some help or get some answers that's part of the reason why they're out there and, um, and usually they can you know we can resolve most of everything almost right then and there within, within a day or so depending on, depending on what it is um, so don't, don't hesitate to reach out to people on site and uh, <clears throat> I just have uh, one more thing I, I forgot to mention it. Um, in the course of doing our basement surveys, and Roger's been on a lot of the basement surveys, do we have any galvanized services we need to worry about? Uh, I haven't seen that yet. I still have a couple of them. Third phase guy, I believe. Um, majority of the ones in the first phase are pretty. Some, sometimes, um, so the water main pipe that, that Roger's replacing installed in 18. And in 1890, a common practice was to use a steel pipe to go from the main into the house. And they would galvanize the pipe, thinking that it would last forever. But what we found is, is that the water running through the pipe eventually wears away the zinc. And then you get a bare iron pipe with water running through it. And what happens is the pipe rots. And it rots from the inside out. And uh, and if you have a galvanized pipe, you should replace it. And the only reason, you, the way you can tell is you go down the basement, a copper water surface coming in will be green, which will lead to corrosion. You know, the co copper corrodes green, where a galvanized pipe will corrode rust. So if you have a rusty pipe coming through your wall, um, now is the optimal time to replace that and get rid of that. Uh, because when, when it does blow, it's uh, pretty usually, it's very, usually very expensive. Roger's going to be there replacing all the pipes anyway. We're going to be working right by the front of your house and we need to coordinate that. So, anybody who's here or listening, you should just check your basement, go down there, and just make sure that you don't carve a pipe on the wall. Um, and if you don't, let us know. And we can coordinate, help coordinate with a plumber to get that change down the balance. It'll be a lot less expensive. Typically, if that goes and it's not a project going on, it's a six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars expense to get home uh, versus, you know, a couple, maybe a thousand dollars going to get here. So it's a big deal. So just check. You yeah. want to you yeah. know about it. Don't be the victim. Same thing for future construction. When the sewer pipe we're providing is typically large enough to encompass any future construction projects, but water, you know, half the time we'll get the water and 
somebody wishes they had increased it or they planning on taking a single family turning as a multiple and wish they had went from a one inch slide to a two inch. So if you're whether you're on this first phase or phase two A or two B, which hasn't been awarded yet, um, just make sure you get a hold of the water department or myself. And if you're going to increase it, now is the time to increase it. I don't once we paved that road, the not allowed to go back in there for X amount of years. They don't want to rip up the new concrete, the new sidewalk, the new pavement. So, I want to make it's provided. Yeah, right. So, that's just things to think about. Yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Okay, yeah, no, I know. Okay, uh, my cards are here. Yeah. I'm available. They'll work for you. Okay, so if you have questions, let us know. I'll throw these up on the table. Grab them on the way out. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh,